much, Corinne. Um, Christmas time is definitely here. Merry Christmas to you and yours. And as we continue celebrating this Christmas season, um, let's sing some carols together, shall we now? Thank you to Corinne for giving us that beautiful start off this morning. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior, was born upon this day. To save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. From God, our Heavenly Father, a blessed angel came, and unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same. How that in Bethlehem was born a Son of God by name. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Star of night, star with royal beauty. 
gotta receive merry gentlemen. 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 Let nothing you dismay. Good morning, good morning, church. Good morning, everyone. Again, Merry Christmas to you and yours. Uh, we're so glad you are with us this morning uh, on this holiday, on this Christmas season. Uh, we are continuing to celebrate that, and so we hope that you guys um, have had an awesome and blessed holiday so far. Uh, we're so happy that we're gathering here together uh, apart in this way. Uh, we're able to still gather as a community of faith to listen, to learn, to give, and to grow, and to go forth and share good news that we have heard today. Uh, it is the message that is rung, ringing out all over, all across the world. Emmanuel, God with us. And uh, do we hear that message and do we take it and, and share that with everybody? Let's continue our praise this morning. Do you hear what I hear? The night went to the little lamb. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Way up in the sky, little lamb. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? A star, a star. Dancing in the night with a tail as big as a kite, with a tail as big as a kite. Said the little lamb to the shepherd boy, Do you hear what I? Sky shepherd boy, do you hear what I hear? Do you hear what I hear? A song, a song, high above the trees, with a voice as big as the sea, with a voice as big as the sea. Said the shepherd boy to the mighty king, Do you know what I know? Do you know what I know? In your palace, warm mighty king, Do you know what I know? Do you know what I know? A child, a child shivers in the cold. To the people everywhere, listen to what I say. Listen to what I say. Pray for peace, people everywhere. Listen to what I say. To what I say. The child, the child, sleeping in the night. He will bring us goodness and light. He will bring us goodness and light. He will bring us goodness and light. 
morning, everybody. My name is Jenna. I'm the pastor here at Faith United Methodist Church, and I'm so thrilled to be gathered with you in worship this morning on this Sunday after Christmas. Uh, we are happy to be gathered and also really happy for the opportunity and the gift that we have to be able to worship in our homes this morning. A couple of quick announcements. I hope that you'll take time to fill out the form that you'll find with the link that you can get in the comments. Uh, that'll just help us know that you were with us today, who was with us today, and that will also be the place where if you have a prayer request where we can be joining with you in prayer in the coming week, uh, you can fill that out there and that will come to a member of our staff as well to be shared with the prayer team or to be kept uh, private with just me. Uh, there are so many reasons that we have to be grateful for the birth of the Christ child, for the opportunity that we have to gather. Uh, and this morning, I'm really grateful for uh, several musical offerings that will be given to us. Uh, you probably saw Corinne early on in the service, and we'll have several more throughout the morning as well, uh, of children in our church who have offered up their gifts to uh, help us worship this morning. So uh, I'm really excited. Uh, our prayer song this morning is going to be a piano piece by Zoe. So as we listen to her play this morning, let's prepare our hearts and minds for a time of prayer. Gracious God, we come to you this morning with hearts full, with gratitude, with joy, with wonderful memories that we hold dear today and that we will hold dear for quite some time. We also hold in tension the grief and heartache that often comes uh, at this time of year. And we know that, my goodness, you are not only just present now, but that you've been present with us through it all. And so we give you thanks for the way that you have entered into our lives, for the fact that you picked this life, this, this life, to be loved, to let us be loved, and to show us what it looks like to generously love all of those around us. God, there's so much for which we would ask, but this morning we simply ask, for your presence, to fill us with the gift of your Holy Spirit, to remind us once more of the gift of a child that you offered us on that night so long ago. Thank you, God. Thank you for this time. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for these experiences which are challenging and yet enriching our lives at the same time. And above all else, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who picked this life for us today in this moment. 
And so we raise our voices with the confidence of the children of God and we pray, to pray, we pray together the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hello. It's good to worship with you this day on the Sunday after Christmas. For the reading for the sermon this morning, I'd like to read from the Gospel of John, the first chapter. These words are very familiar, but listen to the reading of God's holy word this day. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. He was in the world, and the world came into being through Him, yet the world did not know Him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and full of truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace, and the law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ, and no one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So every time when I read this text, I'm drawn to another text. And it's a text that begins the Hebrew Scriptures. In the beginning. In the beginning begins the first story of creation that we find in the book of Genesis. Not the one with Adam and Eve, but that very orderly account of the creation of the world and the universe that comes out of chaos. In the beginning. Let me just read a couple of verses from Genesis chapter 1 for you. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters, then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw through that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. And God called the light day and the darkness God called night. And there's evening and morning on the first day. Isn't it interesting that uh, this gospel writer, John, alludes already to that very beginning of the Hebrew Scripture in the, the creation of, of the universe, the world, out of the chaos or the formless void. And using the same kind of imagery, then this gospel writer begins to talk about the Word. Not named in the beginning, this Word. The Word from God. The word from God uh, by this gospel writer's writing is not this book, I hold, but the very word of God as the gospel writer described it and formed it was, the word of God was in this person from God named Jesus. Fully human, fully divine, full of grace, full of truth, light of the world. Why well, it's very important to me, it's important to you. But for a number of years, it's not that I have struggled with my eyesight, but I can remember at 13 years of age, for example, uh, that I could not see things on the board at school. Uh, that was the day and age in which really they were using chalk and a chalkboard. And I was sitting at the back of, a, of the room and sometimes I couldn't see what was happening, but I listened closely enough, I could make out what was going on. But somehow I could tell that some things were not right. And then I went to the eye doctor. 
And then he just looked at me and said, how have you been able to see anything? And so at about the age of 14, I think, I, I received my first pair of glasses. And when I put them on, I was amazed at what I could see. I did not know, for example, that looking at a, at a tree from, let's say, 20 yards off, that you could actually make out the individual leaves. I was not able to do that until I received glasses. And at the age of 16, when I received contacts, it was like a whole new world that opened up to me. And how it is that really that is a part of light and refraction and things that I don't really understand. But the truth of the matter is, is that as I have aged and as a, something that happened to my eyesight and almost 20 years ago now in terms of, of, um, of a retinal issue, that light has become even more important. For example, I can't, I can't be in a, a dark restaurant and begin to make out the menu. Uh, there are times I've gone over and I've tried to pull the candle closer to me and actually sort of held it up and tried to see some things. And, and so I just find a way to make do or Joan sometimes will just hand me this little magnifying mirror, white light to look at the menu with. Isn't it amazing what we don't see even in our world? Even if we have 20-20 vision like I do with the gift of contacts, isn't it amazing what I sometimes don't see all around me? What's interesting about this text, since it's the Sunday after Christmas, is there's no angel here. There are no shepherds. There are no wise men or magi coming to bring gifts. This is just a very significant theological text reflecting upon the very beginning of the created order and what God was doing then, God was doing again and sending this one as God's beloved son. I think probably during uh, the last few months, we've all begun to see the world differently than we ever had imagined seeing it. I began to think about that. Uh, several months ago and then when we came to this point of the christian year and i began to read once again this very important text that comes after christmas about the beginning of the life of jesus all the told and very significant theological concepts i began to think about what this light truly means i i have to admit that sometimes i'm so busy in my own life that i am uh, particularly unaware of things that may be happening around me it's not that I'm ignoring them, it's just that my, my mind is sort of tracking in a different kind of way. And I have to admit this, that does not necessarily serve me well as a, as a faithful Christian. It doesn't serve me well in terms of how I interact at times. I have, to, I have to admit that. But what I've noticed perhaps even more importantly than that, or at least for me right now it's very important, is that I have taken the time to really look at what is going on around me. And some of the things that are going on around me really do not involve another human being. For example, I've always thought that Texas was not a very pretty place to be in the fall of the year. Uh, I can remember thinking that trees, their leaves turn brown and drop and then you go rake them. But this year I've been so surprised about the colors about the colors that are before me. It's like getting a new pair of glasses. I'm seeing things I've never seen before. But more importantly than even that beautiful sight about fall taking on a different tone or color or an awareness for me is just being present and aware of what's happening in the world. And some of the things that are happening in the world are like they were living in darkness. A few times I've been, uh, referred to the pandemic or to COVID-19, but I think this has really begun to shape us in some significant ways. I think it's going to shape the church in a way that we do not yet know. It's going to shape the church in this way in terms of our own witness. Let's be honest, there are people who will, it'll be a long time before they come back simply out of their own concern for their safety or good health. And I bless that. It means that somehow we're going to have to find a way to be engaged with other people. It means that somehow this very Christ that we represent, who is the light of the world, we're going to have to find different ways of carrying that light in the world and being the light in the world. And so if we're doing 
in-person worship in one of our churches, we still need to realize there are a host of people still engaged with us virtually. It means that somehow that we'll find new ways to teach. I've talked about this before, but it's the way in which we can form so many more groups so that people can become more deeply rooted and grounded in what the Apostle Paul talks about in Ephesians, deeply and rooted and grounded in love. And that love is the love of Christ. It means that somehow we have to finally be aware even more deeply and more broadly about that which is around us in terms of the very hurts of the world. And if we were to think about Jesus and his own ministry, that one of the things that we must say that this light of the world did was he brought healing sometimes to people who needed it. And there's something that we become aware of this year. There are many significant points of healing that must need to happen. Regardless of your political persuasion, what does the expression of your Christian life say to you? If we truly claim to follow this light of the world, who is the very essence of God in this world, what does it say that how we respond to any number of things that, it, that have been troubling this year? Can you really answer the question instead of what your political persuasion may be or what would be best for you? Could you answer in a way in which Jesus may want you to answer it. Can you see people whom you dislike as God sees them? Can you see all people as children of God? Can you see somehow that God would want us to fashion our own witness, our own stewardship of the creation, which is referred to in the beginning of Genesis? in a very different way than we're doing now. One of the things that Christmas does is that we have this great celebration. We enjoy being with each other and our families in which we may not have done this year. But what Christmas really needs to begin to do after the celebration of that day and even before is, is to turn the world upside down. It's the way Luke wrote about it in the Acts of the Apostles. The church turned the world upside down. It didn't mean the world became chaotic. It would mean that the world became as God began, intended it to be from the very beginning of time. It's very interesting. When you live truth and when you speak truth and you, you represent the one who is the light of the world, what you may find out is you may actually sort of find out something that uh, this light of the world found out. Even his own people received him not. It's recorded in one of the Gospels. For instance, you may remember Jesus did that first sermon. It's in the fourth chapter of the Gospel of St. Luke. He does that first sermon. He makes this claim that um, today this prophecy has been fulfilled in your, healing, in your hearing. And they want to run him out of town and throw him over a cliff. For instance, there's sometimes when being the very follower of the light that we claim to be does not bring you peace, does not bring you comfort, does not bring you into a place that's conflict free. It brings you into the place in which you really leave, live into the fullness of what it means to represent this Christ. I think really now's the time after the Christmas dinner and the gifts have been opened for us to begin to reflect on that coming and what it truly meant. It wasn't just a a happy time. It was a earth. It was a life changing event. Has it become that for you? And that's something I have to wrestle with at the beginning of every year after Christmas. How will it be different this year than last year? How will I truly see things? A few days ago, I was um, meeting with a group of people, um, mainly clergy in our conference, small group. 10, 12 of us, uh, some lay persons too. And uh, someone in a devotional talked about something that was written on, um, on the walls of one of the concentration camps. Uh, referred to a piece of music that had been written by Mark Miller, who many of you know, your choirs sing his music. He's been with us at annual conference, but there's a, I believe in God. 
And the person asks the question, how would you complete the sentence, I believe in God when? And I listened as people shared pieces of their story about the time they believed in God or experienced God. And none of it happened. Not one experience that was shared was about something that very good that was going on in someone's life. It was about a point that needed healing. It was about a place of emptiness. It was about a place of trying to define, to find a, a purpose in one's life. And to be honest, that was one of the most new experiences during Advent I've had. So this very light of the world, the Word, the Word, this Christ. How do you say that you believe in Him? And what will you do this coming year? What will you do this coming year? What will you do? What truth will you speak that will witness to that one who is full of grace and full of truth? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, we're, so we're so grateful, grateful to, to our, our bishop, bishop, uh, bishop Michael, Michael McKee, McKee, who offered us a word this morning about the ways that our faith should be uh, changing our lives and the way that we live from day to day. And um, I think it's entirely appropriate then for us to ask ourselves some of the questions we ask every week of ourselves. What is it that God is calling us to do with our lives? How is it that we can use our lives and our gifts and our resources to change the world in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, so during the next song, I'll invite you to uh, meditate on those questions, to uh, ponder what it looks like to offer up our lives and our gifts to God. And uh, I'll also invite you to enjoy some great music by our friends Bryce and Noah here in just a little bit too. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, accept our lives and our gifts to your service so that through us and through them, the world might see more clearly what it looks like to be loved and cherished by you. Amen.
team. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bryce and Noah. What a wonderful gift that was to share your talents with us today. So the presents have been unwrapped. The carols have been sung. It's time now. It's time to put on those, those glasses of Christ. And it's time to, to welcome the love and the joy and the hope and the peace that the Christ child gives us. And that's a message that we can scream from the mountaintops. We can go tell it on the mountain. Kept there watching over silent flocks by night. Behold, throughout the heavens, there shone a holy light. Say, go standing on the go forth with the blessings of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit now and forevermore. Amen.